So next up, I like this one. Cardano said to take over Ethereum's DeFi business if these high transaction fees persist. So Ethereum's network fees are uh, huge and they're becoming a, a major concern and more people are wary of paying the fees, blah, blah, blah. Okay, no one really cares about that. What, what really matters is what's the fees? So there is this site. It's called whitecharts.com forward slash indicators forward slash Ethereum. And uh, just look up, uh, you know, uh, Ethereum fees and you'll find it. So these are the, the Ethereum fees right now. And you can see back in the day, I mean, 0 0.007, pretty nice, right? But that's when Ethereum wasn't worth much. And then it kind of came up and then a little congestion. And this was in June 27, 2017 at 41 cents. And people were out of their mind like, what, 41 cents? It used to be less than a penny back here. And then here we are. And then during the great bull run, bull run, bull run, uh, December 2017, you had a spike and it was a dollar eleven, and people were freaking out over that. And then it kind of came down a little bit. Then in 2018, when it was kind of coming, you know, uh, really hitting a crescendo, you had it at three dollars and twelve cents, and people again lost their minds, like this is ridiculous. And of course, the big sell-off, and here we are, came back again, nothing. Here we are, coming. In. And now take a look at where we're at right now. So, if you can take a look at the highs, the high highs, uh, we were at one point at seven dollars and thirty jesus seven dollars and 36 cents that is amazingly high right now we're sitting around three dollars somewhere around looks uh last value 357 and that is for uh today uh well yesterday so pretty amazing pretty high and um i don't see it really going down because DeFi has just been hot for so long but i mean who knows it'll hopefully come down a little bit but uh, that is a ridiculous amount of fees to pay and that's just for like an average if you want to get something done uh, you got to pay through the nose uh for the ethereum fees like i i had to do a couple things and, the, and i was like yeah i'll wait it's been like two days so i mean it gets kind of ridiculous anyhow back to the story Etherscan, this what well, this gets to it, the, the, the meat of it. Etherscan currently recommends a gas price of 350 G way, how you ever want to say it, for a 20 second transaction waiting time. Uh, meaning that people are paying as much as $50 to process transactions to ETH. So here's the thing like, I mean, you can wait like I do. I'm not paying 50 bucks. I'm not, I, I refuse. So I'll just wait for it and that'll be it. But that kind of goes against the whole principle of cryptocurrency digital assets it's supposed to be fast i mean it's supposed to be like uh not instantaneous but i mean as fast as it can go but right now we're looking at speeds of like uh bank of america speeds and that's not what i got into it for so uh, hopefully uh with the roll of eth 2.0 things get a little better but there is something on the horizon and what they're talking about here is that there was a crypto enthusiast and i'll show you in a bit that, that called on cardano's charles hoskinson to launch smart contracts and native assets faster so that all the DeFi business on Ethereum can be posted to Cardano, which I think is pretty interesting. So this was the guy, this is Anthony Garretts from Twitter, and he just says, hey, I mean, transaction fees are crazy. And uh, can you know Cardano do anything with that? And Charles Hoskinson, which some of you love and some of you hate, says, uh, hey, I can't imagine it, which is why I built Cardano. Nice little dig. Then some other people down here just say, yeah, 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 right. It's never going to happen. But uh, but really, could it happen? I mean, could it happen? We see this all the time, right? We talk about this all the time about the emerging technology. You know, we talk about um, Netscape as far as a browser and then came along Firefox and then came along Chrome and then came along Brave. And then you had social media platforms like MySpace, and then you had Facebook, now you have Instagram and TikTok. I mean, things just kind of get better as time goes on, right? So who knows where it could go? Let me know what you think in the, in the comments section, but uh, I hedge my bet. That's all I'll say. So moving down to the, to the final piece, because the rest of it's kind of boring. Transaction fees are only going to get worse with increasing DeFi activity. Yes, it will. And while ETH 2.0 will try and address this issue, which I hope it does, I, I hope it actually makes itself and, and does real well. But uh, some feel that it may be time to dethrone Ethereum with better and already available solutions. And I got to tell you, as far as like hedging my bet, this is this is why I've invested in the things that I've actually invested into. So that would be uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Cardano, Chainlink, EOS, Tezos, Stellar, VeChain, and uh, the new guy, Theta. So um, you may notice that uh, this has changed because I actually had to update this, not just for Theta, uh, but the amount of my holdings. And I got to tell you, because of the massive run up for Chainlink, this is the percentage as far as price of uh, what I actually hold 
uh, for all these different uh, projects. And uh, Chainlink was uh, a big run. So we'll see what happens. I mean, hey, it's cryptocurrency. It could go to zero tomorrow. Who knows? But the thing is, I mean, I buy all these things for a specific reason, not just because they're the shiny object or they look cool or someone says, this is going to be awesome. I look at it because, like, when I look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin's the first. And I always and I always talk about this, about uh, this firecracker theory I have. It's like firecrackers on a chain. The first one to go off will be the oldest, which is, to me, is Bitcoin. And it's what everybody talks about right now. It's what all the institutions are, you know, gabbing about and, and getting into. So uh, Bitcoin is going to do really well in the short term. Medium term, long term, I have no idea. But uh, that's not my concern right now. I just know that Bitcoin, I truly believe, will pop off first. And then I have Ethereum um, because everything that has to do with decentralized finance, everything that has to do with smart contracts, uh, Ethereum was also in that realm of the first. And I think it has a lot of activity. It's got a great team. It's got smart people. It's got a lot of contacts. It's got a lot of uh, partnerships. So Ethereum, uh, I think, will do very well. Now, here's the thing. Just like what we talked about in this article, I think uh, there is room because everybody wants to hit, hit up the king. And right now, Ethereum is the king right now of that sector. So what could that mean? That's why I invested into Cardano and EOS and Tezos uh, for the smart contract capability. So uh, if they don't, if Ethereum doesn't make it, hey, doesn't make it. Uh, I'm not here to shed tears. I'm here to make a profit. And uh, that's why I invested in other parts. XRP and uh, Stellar, I invested into cross-border payments and remittances. Uh, XRP is more like the banker's coin. Um, so I got into that because I thought that'd be good. But then Stellar, I like their, their business plan, which is to bank the unbanked. And uh, I can I can get behind that. So I think one of those will win out. Don't know which one it is. So I got them both. And then uh, Chainlink, all these different smart contracts we talk about, they all need what's called an oracle. I know there's other oracles coming up, but Again, Chainlink's the first. Now, I might get into something else later, but right now, uh, Chainlink, like I talk about the firecracker theory, uh, I think it's the next one to pop off. And if all these different smart contracts work, whether that be uh, Ethereum, EOS, Cardano, or whatever, um, or Tezos, uh, they're going to need some type of oracle, and I think Chainlink's it. So VeChain and Theta, um, VeChain, and, VeChain just makes sense to me uh, because of my Amazon business, uh, because I need to track these types of things. I need to see, like, especially for these these uh, shifty. Well, I used to work with shifty distributors in China. I cut them off. I after everything happened, I just I just don't deal with them. So, um, but with VeChain, I mean, to actually be able to track for forgeries, for I mean, if you just think about like like Nike. And then there was an aerospace uh, person. One of their comments said that they have a real problem with uh, counterfeit parts. And uh, when they get them in, they're like, well, we hope these things work. I mean, they have to test them and everything else. But to eliminate counterfeit on that part, on baby formula, on different products that are like high-end stuff, VeChain is it. I like it. And not only that, we talked about uh, yesterday about their partnership with the third largest uh, pasta producing uh, company in uh, Italy, where they are... Um, verifying all the different aspects that the employees have to do to meet coronavirus regulations. So, I mean, VeChain only makes sense to me. And Theta is the last one. And Theta, because of what's going on with esports, because of what is going on with um, the, the bandwidth problem, I would say, because we all need bandwidth. And the, in the share economy, Theta takes the unused bandwidth that you're not using, and you earn T-Fuel, and it has a bunch of partnerships, and one of the uh, co-founders, or uh, person involved, I guess, will be the co-founder of YouTube. So that's a very long uh, reason, but that's why I invest in these things. And uh, I think uh, one of them is going to do well, if not if not all of them. Who knows? All right. And uh, speaking of Theta, this this is the lead us to the question today because I talked about uh, adding Theta as uh, to my portfolio yesterday, and I wanted to. The problem was that people asked me, "Well, where'd you get it? Where'd you get it? Where do you get it?" And I. I messed up. I didn't tell you exactly where to get it because now I can get a Coinbase. So let's jump in the office and I'll explain. <laughs>